Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about one example, one more example of bryophyta and that is funaria. Funaria is a moss and as we have seen in the previous video that the bryophytes can be of primitive type and slightly advanced type. The primitive ones have hallus like body whereas mosses have bodies differentiated into root like, stem like and leaf like structure. So this is funaria that we are talking of. Uh, size normally is 1 to 3 centimeters which is like a normal a bryophyte. And the predominant stage is the gametophyte. Now this gametophyte is also seen in two stages. One is the immature or juvenile stage and the other one is the mature one. In case of juvenile, it is developing from the spore. This is where we find all the structures properly developed. So we will draw the mature part. Now when we see the mature part, what is visible to us is an axis. This axis is called colloid or it is known as the stem-like structure. The reason is that it is performing the function of stem but it is not the real stem because the conducting tissue, xylem and phloem are absent. On this stem like structure grow leafy structures. So these leafy structures are spirally arranged all around this axis and we find all this green structure which is growing here. So this green structure, which is the leafy structure, or we can call it leaf-like structure or phyloid. Again, the reason we have written it as like because it is not having the real uh, vascular tissue. Now from the bottom of the stem arise many multicellular thread-like structures. And these structures are known as rhizoids and these are the root-like structures. I am going to enlarge one rhizoid. It is a multicellular structure that means it is made up of multiple cells and the septa between the cells are oblique. So instead of this kind of septa which is normally seen, these septa are oblique. So these are multicellular, these are with oblique septa and when they are young, they are transparent or colorless, transparent when young and they turn reddish brown when mature. So when they mature these structures, they become reddish in color. Now normally when we are talking about this structure, this is actually the gametophyte. When we see the gametophyte, we normally see two branches. So the stem, main axis, it divides only once. So there would be only two branches seen. So if there are two branches, then how is this structure going to look? So these are those thread-like multicellular rhizoids. Then there is this branching which has taken place. So now there are two branches. And on these two branches, we would have those spirally arranged leaf-like structures. These spirally arranged green leafy structures, they cover the stem. One branch is a male branch and the other branch is the female branch. Now how do we identify 
identify whether the branch is a male branch or a female branch. At the tip of the male branch, there are male sex organs and this area is known as the male head. And here we would find many sex organs which are known as anthridia. Similarly, the tip of the female branch is known as the female head and it has the female sex organs which are known as archegonia. So either we find out or look at these sex organs and we can identify whether it is a male branch or a female branch. This is when only the gametophyte is visible but if gametes are produced, fertilization has taken place, then we would find a sporophyte which would develop. And the sporophyte always develops on the female branch. So in that case, what we'll we see is here a thread-like structure and at the tip there is a capsular structure which develops. So this capsular structure which is there, this structure is actually the sporophyte. So if I draw one more branch here, say this is one branch and let me make one more branch with the same spirally arranged leaves. After fertilization, the branch which remains erect is normally the female branch and on this would grow this capsular structure. So this part is the sporophyte and this part is the gametophyte. This is what we said when we were talking about the bryophyte general characters. We said that gametophyte is the predominant stage. Sporophyte develops or grows on the gametophyte and it is going to draw its nourishment from the gametophyte. This stage that is only the sporophyte part is visible only when the reproduction has taken place. That means from the male branch, the spores, they would have reached up to the female branch for which water was required. Fertilization would have taken place on the female branch where this female gamete is present. Zygotes are formed there and from the zygote developed this sporophyte. So if reproduction takes place, then only this sporophyte is formed. From here, spores will be released. These spores will give rise to this juvenile phase that is the protonema. Okay, the name of this juvenile is, it is called protonema stage. And from the protonema now, the mature gametophyte will grow. Now in the next part, what we are going to do is, we will draw the details of the male head and the female head to understand what exactly is the structure like and how these male and female gametes are.